Hey everybody, Rich here with another Linux video. This time I'm going to talk about the Fluxbox window manager. And yes, I know I'm not in Fluxbox currently, but I will be in a moment. I have to show this first because there's a lot of people that do not know how to use a separate window manager with Ubuntu or in this case, Zubuntu 11.04, which is what this is. Uh, first, you actually need to install it, which is done from the Ubuntu Software Center. Now, if you are going to use another Linux distribution, use whatever software center is available to you, uh, whatever package manager, doesn't matter, and just search for Fluxbox. Now, I have Fluxbox already installed. Okay, so how do you enable it once you have it installed? Well, that's easy. Log out. And yes, this is a VMware session. And then, Okay, you're going to log in, but down here, now on the login screen, usually it's the case where, where if it just shows the user, you don't get the option. Some distributions show the option to choose a window manager from here, but in Ubuntu, Zubuntu, Kubuntu, whatever, you have to actually click the username first, and then you get the choice of what window manager you want to use. And I'm going to choose Fluxbox and log in. Okay, uh, now the first thing to note is that the resolution is wrong. Um, obviously it doesn't take up the whole thing here, so now the way to do things in Fluxbox is everything is performed with a right click. So left clicking doesn't do anything, so I right click, go to Applications, Termi Terminal Emulators, and I'm going to use the X-Face Terminal here. Now these menus will be different depending on what distribution you're using. If you're using Ubuntu or Zubuntu, this is what they're going to look like. And also, depending on your distribution, the font may be different and the background color may be different. So, But it's all the same in how it works. That's the point. So I'll launch an X-Face terminal here. Now, the default command to run in order to change the resolution is xrander. Um, it's x-r-a-n-d-r and you get a list of resolutions here. These are the supported resolutions I could use. So I just do X R A N D R dash S as in Sierra and I will do 1366 by 768. There we go. And we're done. Now I have a proper resolution. Okay, so a couple of basic things about Fluxbox. I personally think Fluxbox is awesome. It's just me, but it's fast, and once you start getting used to the way it does things, it's damn efficient. So let's let's launch an app here. So I'll do Applications, Network, Web Browsing, Firefox. Now, the way that Fluxbox does um, apps in its, I suppose I could call it a taskbar, it's called by another name, I don't remember what it is, is that the app actually takes up the entire width of what's available. If I launch another app, like I'll do a mouse pad here, now it has two. Let me just minimize this, minimize this. So two apps, but it just stretches to take up all of what's available. In addition to that, it has four workspaces by default, which you can get to just by clicking this or using the arrows. Now, you'll notice that I have some, uh, now this is an issue with Fluxbox, not really a big deal, but sometimes you get a little bit of pixelation. It's probably a VMware thing. I just right click and I do a restart and it's gone. So, and then it doesn't restart the whole uh, session. It just restarts Fluxbox, which is cool. So I'll take this and close it out and take this and close this out. And what I'm going to do now is show the stuff that everybody has a problem with <laughs> with Fluxbox only because they don't know how to do it. And uh, I showed one a moment ago, which was XRander, which uh, is for the resolution. But now we're going to get to the two things, the two most common things people have about Fluxbox that they complain about is how do I edit this menu and how do I set a wallpaper? <laughs> well, we'll do the wallpaper thing first. Now, uh, in my home folder, uh, LSL, yeah, in the pictures folder, I downloaded an image of a uh, 1985 Testarossa Ferrari, and I want to use that as my background. 
Well, how do you go about doing that? Okay, the command is called FB set BG flux box set background. If I do this by default, it gives me a little noticing. You didn't set anything. I know that, but I wanted to see this. And it gives you a couple options here. If you want to see the full help file, it's FB set BG dash H. So I'll just copy and paste that. Ah, here's all our stuff. And from here, we can set a tiled wallpaper or a centered or a full screen or however we want to do it. The one you probably want to do is A, which is to preserve the aspect. And after that, all you have to do is just run the command with the path, excuse me, run the command with the option and then the path to the uh, image. And I find that I can't use the uh, tilde slash, I have to use the absolute path, which is okay, it's not a big deal. So that would be home slash rich slash picture slash Ferrari dot JPG in this case. So I do FB set BG dash A slash home slash by username pictures Ferrari JPEG. And we're done. And now I have the background that I want. And it should retain as far as I know. Now, as far as where are Fluxbox settings, well, this brings me to my next point, which is how to edit this menu. Okay, so I'll do a clear and I'll go back to my user folder, which you can easily get to with a CD tilde. And if you do an LS long, which is LS-L, you see all your stuff, but there's hidden folders in here. So we'll do an LS-LA for long and all. And it shows all the dot folders, which are hidden. And one of them is Fluxbox. So CD dot Fluxbox. Oops, if I could type it right. Okay. And one of these is menu. Aha. Uh -huh. Now being I am in Zubuntu, I'm going to use the text editor mouse pad. You could use gedit or vim or vi or whatever, or leaf pad or whatever it is. I'm going to use mouse pad. So I will do mouse pad menu ampersand. Now it includes this menu by default, which you should not edit as in this one, you do not edit, but you can use it as a template. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to launch another mouse pad. Okay. So I have these two now and okay, here's my, the one that I can edit and here's the one I'm not supposed to edit and you really shouldn't. Um, and it actually, it tells you that up front. It says, this is an automatically generated file. Please see for information to use your own menu, copy this to this. It tell, Because this is auto-generated, the problem is, is that if you edit it, it could be easily overwritten by something else in the system. You might lose all your settings. And that would suck, wouldn't it? So we don't want that to happen. That's why we use this one and not this one. But we use this as a template. So I see here that in order to launch apps, it's an exec the name and then the uh, path to the executable. So uh, what I'm going to do is in the menu, I am going to uh, throw in an X term so I can get to it really fast. And I want it to appear before all this other stuff. So I am going to hit enter before the include file here and do a left bracket, exec right bracket parenthesis, this is the literal name, so, well, actually, I'm sorry, not the literal name, this is the name you give it, I'll just call it terminal, and then a left brace, and then I'll do uh, X term, right brace, because I don't have to do the absolute path for that, and that should be it, so I'll file save and right click, and there it is, terminal, you don't have to restart, it's all there, and I launch, and it goes, awesome. Now, if I want to uh, add a little line, I'll do bracket separator, right bracket, and save. And now I have a line before all my other stuff. There is even the ability to add in uh, little icons. Now, you'll notice that there's little XPMs here. So, uh, for example, under editors, if I go to mousepad, I should see, actually, where would that be? Accessibility... A submenu application editors. 
yep, mousepad has a little icon there, and I would love to add in an icon, so I want to see some of those icons, so that would be at USR Share Pix Maps. Let's go take a look and see what kind of icons I can get. And paste ls-l, and here's all these nice little icons here. Well, there should be one for Xterm somewhere. Oh, there is. There we go. Uh, Xterm 3232. That should work out quite nicely, so I will copy that line. And let's see, how do I do this? Okay, so I put a less than and a greater than. So I will just copy this line first and go into here and paste it after Xterm. Okay, and then what's the name of that file? Xterm3232, copy. I have no idea what it looks like, but it doesn't matter. I'll see you in a moment. Paste and save, and did it do it? Yep, there's a little icon for it. Well, that icon kind of sucks. So let's try Xterm color. Maybe this one will look a little nicer. And paste that one and save and check it out. Oh yeah, okay, so it looks a little nicer now. So you can actually add icons, and there are other XPM icons on the internet, so you can add your own custom icons if you want to. Now, let's just say I wanted to add something else, like the uh, Chromium browser, which I already have installed in here. So let me bring this back. I think I can only, re yeah, I gotta resize from down here. Okay, that's better. So, that one would be exec Chromium, Chromium Browser, and I'll just leave it as that and put the icon in later. Save. There it is. So now I can quick way to launch Chromium. And this is just basic stuff of how to work around in um, Fluxbox. I can even edit the name of the menu here. So if I want to name it, you know, Rich's Bitchin' PC, save. There it is, it changes the name, but I will change it back to Fluxbox. Save, okay, now it's Fluxbox again. That in a nutshell is it. That is how to get around in Fluxbox. Um, to find out what you can run, as far as what you can put in your menus, that's pretty easy. All you have to do, well, I'll use the uh, Xface terminal because it has a bigger font. Just go to, um, USR bin, so cd space USR, uh, slash USR slash bin for binary, and then LSL. All these are the apps that I can run. You can run them manually from here, and uh, you don't have to put in the absolute paths either, which is good. And you can just go for it from there. Any one that is a green one can be run. There are quite a few of them, and you can put any one of those into the menu here, or alternatively, you can just, um, and this would probably be the easier way to go about it actually, open up this menu, so I'll do mouse pad, paste, oops, ampersand, okay, and just find the ones that you want in your little quickie menu here and then just copy and paste it right into here. It's That's probably the much easier way to go about it. So if I wanted something like, uh, okay, here it is, the GIMP. So I'll just copy this one, this, this whole line right here. I'll copy that, and I'll paste it in here, and save. Okay, so now I have the GIMP here in a very quick access. So you can put all the stuff that you access the most just in this little menu here. And you can make sub-menus and do whatever you want. It's really easy with the, well, once you get the hang of it. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. I can't really think of anything else to say about it. I personally really dig Fluxbox. It's one of the uh, the underdogs, <laughs> so to speak, of window managers. Definitely not the most uh, powerful one. It does have a bit of a learning curve to it, as you can see here. But once you get used to it, I think it's pretty awesome.